What's up everybody, Corey with Freaky Tech Reviews here. So I recently reviewed a docking station from JSO that I've been pairing with the ROG Ally and enjoying the heck out of. The Ally is a great handheld gaming console, but with a docking station, it becomes its own mini gaming rig with full use of peripherals and other inputs. And today I have the next step up from JSO, which is their HB1201 RGB docking station that really ups your dock game. And it has one feature specifically that is a must have if you plan to dock your handheld console. Handheld gaming has blown up this year with fierce competition between Valve, Asus, Lenovo, and other brands. And while I love the portability of such a powerful gaming device, I don't always want to just sit there with my head hanging down staring at a small screen. And because I love PC gaming so much because of mouse accuracy, peripherals, and being comfortable while gaming, I went on the hunt for a dock for my ROG Ally. There are several dock options out there, but I've been pretty happy with JSO so far, so I haven't really looked beyond this company. And the HP702 that I reviewed recently has been great because it provides a variety of inputs that allow you to hook up a mouse and keyboard, external storage, one gig ethernet, and even has dual monitor support. So from a basic dock standpoint, it's been great and it still has my recommendation. But 4K resolution caps out at 60 hertz on this dock and you can only get 120 hertz if you use 1080p. However, if you're looking for the next level of dock, then this new RGB dock has some really great features that I'm already loving. Now, as we dive into this new RGB dock, I have a link in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But starting out with the design, it has a more gamer friendly peripheral look to it and the design of it has this low profile and kind of aggressive style. It also comes with stickers to put on top of the dock, which I really appreciate because I don't necessarily want to put these stickers on it and I can actually opt out. And the RGB lighting looks great and is nice and bright and you can fully customize it through software found at openrgb.com where you can change the effects of the colors to suit your preference. And I also saw that I could use that software to change the RGB settings on my ROG Ally as well. And to quickly turn the lights off manually, you touch and hold the center icon on the dock and the lights will shut off after two seconds. It has a simple pop out tray to hold your handheld console, but a super nitpicky improvement is that I would like for it to be a little higher so that I can keep my allies grips on while it's docked instead of having to put something under the dock to elevate it. For ports, you have two USB-A 3.2 and a USB-C 3.2 that all have 10 gigabit per second transfer speeds. It has a USB-A 2.0 and a one gig ethernet port, as well as a 3.5 millimeter audio jack and then an SD and micro SD card slot. And then one of the step up features, it has an HDMI 2.1 with up to 4K 120 hertz refresh rate and a 1.4 display port that also has 4K 120 hertz refresh rate. Now during testing, I was able to reach my LG monitor's max 165 hertz refresh rate and my Tumu monitor's max 180 hertz refresh rate, which was impressive. I really wasn't expecting my ally to be able to do this and the dock to be able to handle it, but it didn't even heat up. However, as you can see, there are stuttering warnings and this was without anything else playing besides the browser. So it may not be able to do that well for frame rates while gaming. And also I had a great question on my last dock video from a viewer about audio pass through on the HDMI port. And yes, audio pass through works on both docks. Now the feature that I got the most excited about and that makes this dock a must buy if you have an ROG ally specifically is 30 watt turbo mode while docked. Previously, I was only able to reach 25 5 watt turbo mode on the first dock and the only way to reach 30 watt turbo mode was with ASUS's $65 separately purchased dock. And I said it in the last video and I will say it again, it should have been included in the box ASUS. Neither dock comes with a power cable to your wall outlet so I ended up using my Algzum 65 watt charging block that I did a short on a couple of months ago and through the 40 to 65 watt USB-C output I was able to reach that 30 watt turbo mode. Which is nice because that means it's not necessary to have a 100 watt power brick. This is the max performance you can get out of your ally and it's my preferred way of using it. It allows you to get the best out of your graphics and gaming quality and the best internet speeds. The 1201 is compatible with most handheld consoles and I think it's a worthy consideration for your gaming setup. And although it is quite an investment at $90, you can use the code FreakyTech4 for an additional 4% at checkoff, checkoff, checkoff. And I understand that if you get this dock and have to get a separate power break, then it starts going over the $100 price point, which is quite a bit. But let's say you were considering getting Asus's little travel dock, but because that's $65 and it only has two ports, this JSO dock has a ton to it that makes it more than just a gaming setup, you can actually make it into like a mini workstation on the go if you'd like to. Well, let's discuss if you should consider it or other alternatives from JSO because they actually have a lot of options on their website. There is another RGB dock that is identical in design to the 1201, but it only comes in at $60. It looks to have the same setup as the first dock that I reviewed, but it is more aesthetically appealing and just a tad bit more expensive. But overall, these are two very good options for the price and are gonna give you most of what you need from a dock. I found gaming easily enjoyable without needing 30 watt turbo mode 
or high refresh rates. And like I said a second ago, I also think the first dock is great if you need a PC setup on the go as it's very portable and it's pretty sleek looking for travel. But if you wanna push your ally or handheld console to its limits and have as much of a mini gaming PC as you can, then the extra $30 for the 1201 is easily worth it in my eyes. But I would love to know your thoughts in the comments below. Do you think this dock is worth it? And I'll be down in the comments discussing with you as I'm really curious to see what the community thinks about something like this. But be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and join the Freaky Tech family. I am on a quest to hit 2000 subscribers in December and I cannot do it without your support. But I really appreciate you spending some of your time and day with me. Again, I'm Corey with Freaky Tech Reviews. I'll see you next time.